Hi everybody. So today I wanted to post this video um, regarding something that I saw on the on Reddit in golf. Uh, somebody posted a while back about um, why is it when they go into Golfsmith or Dick's Sporting Goods or a um, place like that that when they hit their clubs, the new clubs, their distances seem to be higher and you know is there a way to trick the system to being able to give out uh, larger distances, things like that. Um, so I wanted to kind of show a couple different reasons why that happens and actually the secret within GC2 about how to change your shot distance. I really doubt that they do that because you'll, as you'll see later in the video, a little bit of change can make a pretty drastic difference in the distance and it's, it'd be really easy to notice. So the first thing I want to talk about is what balls actually do to your distances and the balls that they use versus like the ball that you would probably use out on a golf course. Um, so I've got a bunch of different balls here, but I'll, I'll hit a few different ones and just kind of show you the difference. Mainly what's going to go on is ball speed and spin rate is going to change. And the relationship between those is going to drastically change how much distance you get. So I have a six iron because that's usually what they give you for demo clubs uh, nowadays over at Dick's. And I was going to start with like, um, well, let's just start with like an older two, like regular two piece ball that you might find and play. And so in this case, we're going to use a Nike NDX, just a standard, you know, not a high spinning distance ball, but as you're going to kind of see, they actually aren't terribly low spinning uh, either. So now for me, I should be around 6,000 RPMs with a six iron. So that was 136 miles an hour ball speed and 6,000 RPMs of spin. And it produced a shot just over 190 yards, which is about my normal. I'll hit one more with it and then let's move on. That was well struck. That was 133, so less ball speed, but only 5,800 RPMs of spin. And so the result was the distance was nearly identical. Next, I'm going to move to a high spinning ball. This is actually a Nike 20XI X. Um, another one I could use would be like a Pro V1X. Um, so those balls tend to be a little bit higher spinning off the mid-range irons. So this ball I actually expect to move up to about 6,500 and the distance will drop because of it. That was a really horrible swing. That will probably be down just because I drew it so much. 134 mile an hour ball speed. 63.50, but I also hit that draw, and that draw is going to reduce the overall spin. Let's try and get rid of the draw here and see what we get. Well, most of the draw has gone there. That one went 186 off 133 mile an hour ball speed. And had 65.50 of spin. So an additional 500 RPMs of spin with the same ball speed produced six less yards. Now we're gonna go to a ball that you would actually hit in a place like Golfsmith. This is a ball I actually took from them uh, with their permission, of course. Uh, it's a Callaway practice ball. Um, this one's fairly new. So it's not like one of those older beat up Shrixons that I always see in there when I go in there and play around. This ball tends to be a little bit closer to what uh, 
a ball you would actually play on the course would be. I'm hitting that draw today. So that was 138 miles an hour of ball speed, 5,800 RPMs of spin. So a lot of that could be attributed to the higher ball speed and the draw. Why well, it went further, I think that was 196 carry. Try one more. Try and get rid of that hook. Oh, that did it. Big block. Even with that blocked shot, 135 miles an hour, and 5,800 RPMs of ball speed. Now I want to show you something new. Let's add, a lot of times if you go and try clubs, they'll tape up clubs. We don't have masking tape, but this will do basically the same thing. I'll just put a sticker, in this case impact tape, between the grooves. We'll hit the same ball, and watch what happens. That was a huge hook. So now, 138 mile an hour ball speed because of this impact tape dropped the spin to 29.45 and the result was a shot that was like 230 yards I don't know exactly, 220, 230 off a of 6 iron not anything realistic but produced numbers because the tape got in between the grooves and didn't actually allow the ball to create any spin I hit it one more time There you go. So, 222 yard carry, 137 mile an hour ball speed, 3,000 RPMs of spin. So simply by putting that tape on, you pretty much ruin all your numbers. And a lot of times people don't know that. One more thing I wanted to just show was what happens when you use a lower spinning ball. So in this case, um, a lower spinning ball for me is something like this tailor-made Tour Preferred X. This ball doesn't spin nearly as much and it'll do kind of the same thing where it'll produce longer carries because the ball speed is, the ball spin is down. Not the best hit. Still a carry of 199, 136 mile an hour ball speed, 4900 RPMs of spin, and that's with the tape removed. So there is something, I'll actually I'll grab the camera so you guys can see this. So in this software, and mine's a newer version of Golfsmith software, they're using a really old software and partially I think their numbers are wrong because of it. Um, it's probably like three years old at least, at least the one by my house is. So there is this thing called Shot Distance Boost. And you can select Shot Distance Boost and you can see right now it's at 1.0. But I want to show you just how drastic, let's, oops, that's all the way to, let's do a 5% change. Should just go, no, nope. shows you how often I use it. Alright, 5%. So 5% change, and what it's going to do to my 6-iron shot. So remember, I, I didn't have one that went over 138 miles an hour. Um, most of them were in the 134, 135 range. So we'll go back and we'll use, um, let's just use the last ball we were using, which is that Tour Preferred X. That's it. So the last shot I did here was 138, I think. 
So now let's show what 5% does. Ah, big old hook. So now all of a sudden my carry was 211 and I hit it 143. I really didn't hit it 143, it just hacked on 5%. Now the funny thing is this goes all the way up to 2. So you get a little crazy and it actually it's laughable, but you can set this shot boost all the way to 2 and it gets pretty funny of what actually happens. Same ball. <laughs> Will it hit 400? That's not going to hit 400. 350 at least. Oh, it hit the house. So now it says I had ball speed of 273 miles an hour, which is faster than any long drive champion. And I hit that one like 360 yards for a carry with a 6 iron. So obviously that's believable. So for the most part, to sum this up, I don't think, even though you can use the shot boost, I don't think they actually do it. Most, I would assume that the overwhelming majority of time has the shot boost set at one, so that there is no shot boost. The second thing is always be aware that if you tape up your clubs, they're going to be inaccurate. Watch the ball spin rates that you see from the launch monitor. If you're getting something like 3,000 RPMs or 2500 RPMs or something off of a mid iron, the chances are it's inflating your distance number. And you very well could bring your own club in and you'll get that same spin rate and that'll also inflate the number. So those are just the things to look for. The main thing that you'll want to do when you're there, when you're testing between clubs, is watch your launch angles, watch your ball speeds, and watch your spin rates relative to your existing club. If your launch angles go up, if your ball speeds go up, and your spin rates generally stay the same, you're gonna have a, you're gonna have a club that's going to fly higher and fly farther, and typically have uh, better carry distance. Now, if you have a club that has lower launch and higher spin, you'll probably wind up with a shot that'll look the same but'll play worse in the wind. So just be aware of those things and uh, use them against your clubs for what the value that they have on them, which is that they're only comparable to your club at that particular time on the same monitor. Hope that was informative. Bye.